Let's make the grid system that we created into a responsive grid system. So the best thing for us to do is to jump into our CSS and we're going to make this uh, mobile first to get started. And so just to make this mobile first, what I'm going to do is just for the time being, comment out this section. So just using command forward slash or control forward slash on a PC. Now I want to talk to everything that's a class. So in order to do that, I'm going to say class star equals call everything with call in it, call one, call two, etc. And we're going to say on this one that the grid column end is going to span 12. Oops. Save that and let's view that in the web browser. So that's everything now that's got that call attached to it is now one whole width wide, which means it works perfectly on lots of different devices, except for the 12 column, because we didn't put anything in on that one. So now is a good time for us just to go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to quickly run in call 12. Now, all the problems that we talked about previously have gone away. This works perfectly on small devices, right there up to any large device. So we know that that's good. It works great there. Now, obviously what we need to do is specify how this is going to work on larger screen devices. So I'm gonna use that um, comment just to put in a message in here for myself. So default small devices, just so that I know. Now inside here, I'm going to say above 1025 pixels. Okay, so how do I target that? I do at media. So now we can say that anything that's over 1025 pixels is going to be typically a desktop. It's not always, but typically, and therefore we're going to apply these rules to it at that size screen. So we go in and we look and that's fine. For all of these column one, two, they're all fine. The 12 column one isn't quite working because we never made a rule for that. So let's do call 12, span one, and that fixes that problem. So that's fine on desktop. We now have everything the way we want it. When it gets down to tablet, it's still optimizing directly for mobile. So we may want to do an intermediary in here. So let's take this entire media query. Let's copy it. Let's pop it in here. And let's say that this is 601 pixels in here. And inside here, I'm gonna name this MD for medium. So I can add this in on medium sized screens. So now looking at this, if I put MD2 in here on a medium sized screen, I should be good. So here, we're fine, it stays, there's that, and all the others change, but this stays as two columns. And column three is very difficult to sort of split into uh, a smaller size other than column three really. So I'm gonna leave that as full width at that point, but Column four goes nicely into a medium two. So now the 12 becomes three columns at that size. And we've now specified a different layout for the tablet size. So we've got it normal at the desktop size, tablet size, a different layout and small size, everything fits across all. So we could also create another rule so this is below 600.
So now we've got the option of still being able to subdivide down at small, if necessary, and I can do that for column 12. Let's right click and inspect. And now on an iPhone, we can see we get our design working. It's all readable. And if there's real content in there, we'd be able to read that. We go up to a bigger size screen and it's fine there. We go up to an iPad, it's working fine. And if we go landscape, it's still working fine. And then we'll go to our desktop screen and we know it works fine there. So we've created very simply the same 12 column grid, which now gives us flexibility for redesigning and reflowing into different size grids at different screen sizes. This is the basis of responsive web design.